I am a longtime fan of the Fallout series. My introduction to it was 2001's Fallout Tactics, and ever since then, I've gone out of my way to play every Fallout installment. Yes, even Fallout 76. In today's Midnight Snack, I'm going to rank my favorite Fallout DLCs from Fallout 3, New Vegas, and Fallout 4. I won't go through the Creation Club, as that would both take too long and there's hardly anything there worth the asking price. Nor will I rank the Gunrunner's Arsenal, Courier's Stash, or the High Resolution Texture Pack, as they're not really notable DLCs, and if I had to rank them, they would be at the bottom. This is all just my opinion and just for fun. So, without further ado, number 15, Contraptions Workshop, Fallout 4. The Contraptions Workshop DLC added boxcars, factories, conveyor belts, armor and weapon racks, scaffolding, and elevators. As someone who absolutely loved the settlement system in Fallout 4, I eagerly looked forward to this DLC. It's mostly a quality of life improvement, especially by adding things like armor and weapons displays. But because of that, it's also fairly skippable. Number 14, Wasteland Workshop, Fallout 4. The first of the three settlement-focused DLC for Fallout 4. Wasteland Workshop added traps, concrete structures, more lighting options, the decontamination arch, and 16 cages to capture and tame hostile wildlife. I think there's a good argument it's actually worse than the Contraptions Workshop, but I had so many hours of fun playing as a mad scientist domesticating Deathclaws in Yao Guai that it has a special place in my heart. Number 13. Operation Anchorage Fallout 3 The first ever Fallout DLC. Operation Anchorage has the player helping the Brotherhood Outcast open up an armory by completing some simulated training exercises. Combat was never a strength of Fallout 3, and that's really all Operation Anchorage is. Just a new area in the capital wasteland full of some tough super mutants and four linear combat maps in the simulation. Winterized and nigh unbreakable gear via an exploit aside, there's really nothing here. Number 12, Mothership Zeta, Fallout 3. The final DLC for Fallout 3. The protagonist is abducted by aliens and has to escape. Mothership Zeta is the only DLC I actually hate. It starts off with a bit of horror, then it gets wacky like a good B-movie, which I'm all for, but then it keeps going, and going. There's good cinematic moments and some abduction audio logs that are great horror storytelling, but this DLC overstays its welcome. And after the first few moments, it's all just a combat slog through hundreds of alien soldiers. Number 11, vault Tech Workshop, Fallout 4. The final and best of the Fallout 4 Workshop DLCs. This time, the player is in charge of building and operating their own vault, Vault 88. It has its own quest line, its own NPCs, it's even got some morality choices. If the player wants to follow through on vault Tech experiments or not. Even then, it's missing just a little bit more narrative to really push it into the top 10. Number 10, Nuka World, Fallout 4. Fallout 4 is short on morally reprehensible choices. You're a parent looking for their son, and most factions, even the morally gray ones, tend to only show the player their better aspects. Which on the surface view, means that the player can feel like they're always playing the good guy. Nuka World added three raider factions, and regardless of which side you chose, there's no convincing yourself that you're a good guy. The setting of a post-apocalyptic theme park is great. The new raiders look amazing. The story, however, it falls flat. As does being able to bring your raider gang into the main game, where they are essentially just a different type of Minutemen offering a separate settlement system. I had high hopes for this DLC, and it just fell a little short. Number 9. Honest Hearts, Fallout New Vegas Honest Hearts had the player join up with a caravan company and head up towards Utah to trade with the Mormons. Instead, you get shot up and stranded in Zion National Park and have to work with two friendlier tribes against one hostile one. It's got plenty of good items, especially for melee players, and Joshua Graham, the burned man, is finally seen after being referenced plenty in the main game. And Graham is great, he's among one of the better written Fallout characters. But the main story is kind of bog standard, and none of the tribes ever felt all that fleshed out. But it is pretty, and I did love reading up on the survivalist and his life after the war. Number 8. Broken Steel, Fallout 3. 
The original ending to Fallout 3 actually ended the game, much like the previous two Fallout games. But Bethesda, being known for their Elder Scrolls games, had a much wider audience who were not used to their sandbox RPGs actually ending. Broken Steel added a handful of post-game missions, changed the overworld just a bit, and allowed the player to continue on doing their side quest. It's absolutely fine. I actually prefer some of the new quests to the main story of the DLC. Number 7. Lonesome Road, Fallout New Vegas Likely controversial placing this so low on the list, but I found Lonesome Road to be way too long. I love the aesthetic, I love the ruined 1950s style US bases, I love the underground city, but it's a slog. And I found the fact that the location was so tied to the player character to be alienating. When it released, none of my couriers in my roleplay would have gone there. But here we're told more about our character than in the main game or any other DLC. Obsidian's The Courier was a much blanker slate than any of Bethesda's characters. And this felt a little bit too intrusive on my roleplay, and the payoff wasn't much. I appreciate it more for being Obsidian's final word on the franchise. It said war. War never changes. But men do, through the roads they walk. Number 6. Automatron, Fallout 4. I went back and forth on this one's placement. I don't think its story or atmosphere is better than Lonesome Road, but what I think it has over the other DLC is customizable robots. I love the Rust Devils as a new raider group. I love their look. I love the new workbench, which allows the player to create all kinds of new robots. I love Ada, and I love to hate Jezebel. It's much simpler and sillier of a story, but it never overstays its welcome. And building robots is fun. It's not deep. It's fun. Number 5. Point Lookout Fallout 3. Point Lookout is a damn good Fallout DLC, focusing not on the deserts or ruins that we're used to. No, it's in the swamp, with good old mutated swamp hillbillies. The atmosphere is great. The map is fantastic. There's so much to explore and discover without it ever feeling too large and empty. The main story is rather short and simple, but it has some standout moments, like the defense of the mansion and the drug trip. The side content is no slouch either, with Lovecraftian horrors to explore and a haunted mine. If there's one weakness, it's that the two central characters are kind of forgettable, which is weird for two ancient spies locked in an eternal conflict. Number 4. The Pit, Fallout 3. The Pit is by far my favorite Fallout 3 DLC. It's claustrophobic and oppressive. The player is brought into a fairly gray conflict where regardless of outcome, there's no happy ending. I wish Bethesda took this tone more often with Fallout. I loved fighting in the arena. I'm one of those weirdos that actually likes finding all the iron ingots. And I like Asher as the warlord slaver of the pit. I actually wish we got way more time with him, in fact. I wish this DLC was actually longer, which isn't true for most of my feelings for DLC. Dig more into the culture and the ideologies of the Pit and her citizens. This is a great DLC. Number 3. Old World Blues, Fallout New Vegas After poking at a fallen satellite, the player is teleported to Big Mountain, a hidden pre-war research station. Now it's overrun by mindless lobotomites and mechanical scorpions. And the leaders of this place are a bunch of crazy pre-war scientists who are now brains in jars. This is the wackiest of all the DLC, and honestly funny. There's so much to explore, in fact, maybe too much, and there's a handful of new perks to unlock, a new stealth suit, and, and even once it's completed, a new player home. This is a shining gold star of a DLC. Number 2. Dead Money, Fallout New Vegas Once again, I placed the more claustrophobic and restrictive DLC higher than the bigger, more open-ended one. I think Dead Money was the best New Vegas DLC, and very nearly the best DLC in the series. The player character is kidnapped and forced into a suicide squad to rob a pre-war casino. You start off with nothing against foes who are actually hard to kill, and some holographic enemies which cannot be killed at all. The survival horror aspect to the DLC is the star, forcing the player to navigate between poison clouds, holographic enemies, and even radios whose frequency will cause the player's remote bomb collar to explode. It's a tense DLC with a clear focus. Obsession. 
This is not just a good Fallout DLC, it's a good survival horror story. Number 1. Far Harbor, Fallout 4 Far Harbor feels like Bethesda wanted a chance to redo all of Fallout 4. We have a large island map with a mysterious radioactive fog. We have factions, including a whole hidden society of synthetics in the mountains. We have a focus on rural New England culture. Or, what of it has survived the apocalypse? The main storyline is engaging. You help Nick Valentine, the best written Fallout 4 companion, search for a missing persons case, which takes you to the mysterious island. There's even some good crossover between this DLC and the ending of the main story of Fallout 4. On top of all of that, there's also some really good side quests. My favorite is solving a murder mystery between robo-brains. This is so good it could have been expanded further into its own video game. So that's my list. What would your ranking of the Fallout DLCs be? Let us know in the comments. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe for more videos. And as always, thanks for watching.